Have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Welcome to another five minute flip. What is up, Flip Eponymi? Welcome to your five minute flip for October the 7th, 2023. Uh, today we're going to open up scripture and just read a passage from John 3. And this is Jesus and John the Baptist interacting and a little bit of a little bit of background before the before I read John the Baptist was getting really popular he was a prophet Israel hadn't seen an official prophet in 400 years or so from the end of the writing of the Old Testament and John the Baptist appears as a prophet and he's gaining a following uh, so there's whispers that maybe he's the Messiah and I don't know I, I I, I know I can relate to this, and, and, and I know my context might be different than yours, but with doing a podcast and having statistics and writing a book and wanting there to be sales, and there there's this sort of this, there and, and, and by the way, planting a church and, and being really concerned, you know, about how many people we have and, and do we have enough to be sustainable and people, people deeming me as valuable or not based on the quote-unquote success of my church. So if you, you know, have a church plant and, and you're, you're, bu- you're bursting at the seams and you're having hundreds of people coming, people are very impressed. Uh, if, if you're not, if you're, if you're smaller, uh, you know, whatever it may be, which we are, you know, you, people aren't. People aren't as impressed. And, and you start to then question your own sense of identity, your own sense of value, your own sense of, you know, am I really good enough? And so that's probably not your context, but what is you, what is your context? You know, what are the spaces that you are looking to, the externals, the external metrics that you're looking to to give you your sense of value, your sense of identity? And so for John the Baptist, you know, everything was trending upwards for him. And he's becoming a, a celebrity, really. And then it's this really incredible uh, kind of passing of the baton uh, onto Jesus's ministry. And so let me read uh, the passage. We're in uh, John chapter 3, uh, 22 through 30. It says, After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John was baptizing at Anon near Selim, because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, a person can only a person can receive only what is given them from heaven you yourselves can testify that i said i am not the messiah but am sent ahead of him the bride belongs to the bridegroom the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and he is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice that joy is mine and it is now complete he must become greater i must become less and so, you know, in this passage, it's it's really interesting. One, I think verse 26 always stands out to me where Jesus is becoming popular. Like th- these people that were following John are now following Jesus. This is like if you start a church and your church is is blowing up, you're getting interviews, you're on the cover of the of the Christian magazines or whatever. And then somebody else starts a church across town or across the street, and your people start going over to that church. I mean, that would be hurtful. There's no way. There's no way around it. As a human, you you would be hurt by that. Uh, depending on your level of character, you know, you might dis- you might respond in different ways to that other church or that other pastor. That's kind of what's happening here with John and Jesus. I mean, with the exception, obviously, that John came to prophesy that Jesus was coming, but people were confused. And I think we have that same confusion with pastors and in the church today, where John's job was to point people to Jesus, not to point people to himself. But people are people, and people were latching on to John. And and 
they're starting now to go over to Jesus. And John's disciples are getting worried about this because if John's disciples are hanging on to John's, uh, you know, the, the, the ends of his rabbi cloak, so to speak, they have a sense of notoriety as well. But guess what? You don't know the names of any of John's disciples. Why? Because it wasn't about John. It was about Jesus and his disciples. So these disciples of John are now seeing their identity as being threatened and their sense of power and prestige and popularity as being, and their level of influence as being threatened. So they're coming to John concerned in verse 26, and they're saying, Rabbi John, you know, that man that was with you, he's baptizing. And they say, everyone is going to him. Now, John really had an opportunity to blow it here. You know, the, the recorder is on. This is right. Uh, but John answers correctly. Uh, and he goes into this metaphor. Well, first he says, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Savior. Uh, I was sent ahead of him. But then he goes into this metaphor and he says, the bride belongs to the groom. And we're like, yeah, the bride belongs to the groom. You think of a, a, a wedding day or even a wedding night. Uh, there's a, there's a, a very intimate metaphor that he's using here. And he says, the friend who attends the bridegroom, the, the friend who attends the groom, this would be the best man. Uh, the best man's job is not to take the bride, right? The best man, can you imagine how awful and, and even, you know, sick and, and grotesque of a picture that would be as you're at a wedding and the best man uh, butts in front of the, the groom and somehow, you know, takes the bride with him in, into, uh, and, and they go, that you know, they he steals her and, and they go on a honeymoon or something. Uh, that is... That is not the job of a best man. And John is saying that uh, my job is not to get the bride. My job is not to get the glory. Uh, my job is to attend to the groom. It's to attend to Jesus. It is to wait for Jesus. It is to listen for Jesus. And then he says, and is full of joy when he hears the groom's voice. My, I, I'm full of joy. When I hear Jesus' voice, he says, that joy is mine, and it is now complete. And I think of how much joy and peace you and I would have if we found our joy and peace in hearing Jesus' voice, in waiting on Jesus and hearing his voice, not finding joy and peace in getting glory, glory for ourselves, not joy and peace in finding our sense of validation, identity, approval, acceptance in external factors, whatever they may be. You might be on a recovery journey from uh, pornography, from unwanted sexual uh, behavior. You might be on a recovery journey from substance abuse. Uh, you may not even realize that you're looking for your approval, acceptance, validation in external ways from your coworkers, from your boss, from your social media feed. Uh, whatever that it may be. But how much joy and peace would we have if we found it in waiting and listening for Jesus? And he says that joy is mine. It's now complete. And I love verse 30. Verse 30 is a, a verse we should all memorize. It says, he must become greater. I must become less. And this is really countercultural to America. And really it's countercultural to the American church. If you're a church leader, but here John the Baptist says, he must become greater. Jesus must become greater. I must become less. And I would just invite you to take a moment and ask, even, even now uh, in, in this podcast, to ask the Holy Spirit, what does that mean for your life? In what area of your life do you need to become less and that Jesus needs to become greater? What area of your life Do you need to make Jesus bigger? Do you need to make it about Jesus and his glory and that you need to become less? Where you're trying to be right, where you're trying to get attention, where you're trying to prove yourself, where you're, you're trying to get glory or validate yourself, where you're trying to take control and be in control or dominate a situation or manipulate a person, or try to change somebody and control their behavior. Jesus must become greater. I must become less. Just make that your prayer today. As you go throughout your day, make that your prayer and make it your goal to listen 
and wait for Jesus and to find your joy in hearing his voice. That's all I got for you for your five-minute flip. Thank you for listening. Be sure to check out our long-form episodes, recent episodes with Peter Sung on the Post Church Church and recent episode with Crystal Renaudé on helping women overcome pornography, helping women who are struggling with looking at pornography. Uh, I will see you next time on the flip side. Thanks for listening to this five minute flip. Subscribe for more flips and long form episodes of the flip side. Visit www.patreon.com slash Noah to support and get sweet flip side swag.